This video is not for the people who have PhD in AI or machine learning or for those who work at big AI labs like OpenAI, Anthropic or DeepSeek. If you are a mere mortal like me and want to understand what exactly is a data set, a data set format and what type of data sets are available and how can we decide which data set type to be used for fine tuning and training a model then this video is for you. This is Fahad Mirza and I welcome you to the channel. A data set is a structured collection of data used to train, fine tune or evaluate artificial intelligence models. Think of it as the textbook from which AI models learn patterns, relationships and behaviors. Data sets contain examples that teach models how to perform specific tasks, whether that's understanding language, recognizing images, or making predictions. Data sets are essential because AI models learn through pattern recognition rather than explicit programming. They need thousands or millions of examples to understand how to respond appropriately to new unseen inputs. The quality and diversity of the data set directly impact the model's performance and capabilities. Data sets are used in several key areas, including training, where uh, we teach models from scratch using large, humongous amount of data. We use data sets in fine tuning, where we adapt pre-trained or base models for specific tasks or domains. We also use data sets to evaluate models where we test model performance and identify weaknesses. We can also use it for research purposes where we develop new technologies and techniques and benchmark progress. So let's now delve into the distinction and differentiation between data set format versus data set type. It is very, very important to understand what exactly is a data set format because I have seen many beginners or even some of the experts struggle with it, which include me too, I mean beginner. Um, so let's try to understand what exactly is this data set format. Think of these data formats as something like different languages for organizing information. So data set format is a different way of structuring the same type of data. You might have heard the name share GPT, message format. These are the data set formats. As you can see on your screen, um, we have this data set format, which is message. It's quite standard where you have this um, message JSON format, where we have system role, user role and assistant role. System simply tells the role of the AI model, user asks a question and then model responds to that question. So this is a simple message format or if some people even call it message template or data set template. Then we have share GPT format, same thing, but you see in a different way. So again, we have a system message like this and then instead of having it in the same list or array, we have just put it in conversation array where we have again a JSON dictionary where human has a question and model responds to it. Now, similarly, two more data set formats are alpaca. Again, system instruction input output. So just the wording and the way we format the data has changed, nothing else. Data remains the same. And then finally, we have query response just the labels of those keys in json have changed here and history just maintains the history of the chat with the model so whatever you're asking now will for the next one will go into the history that's pretty much it so this whole thing will go into the history so this is what data set format is now let's talk a bit more about it because i think that it is quite important to understand this difference the distinction between data set format and type is crucial for understanding AI training data. Again, data set formats like this share GPT and then alpaca and messages are simply different ways of organizing the same underlying information. They are like different filing systems for the documents. Now let's check out the data set types. 
data set types on the other hand represent fundamentally different purposes and training objectives now if you look here there are various kinds of data set types so first up we have pre-training data set and what i have done here is i have not only given you the example of it i'm also telling you where you can use it and also a quick definition so i will also be reading it from screen but i want you to have this video as a reference so that instead of just listening to me you will just quickly look at the screen and you would know where to use which data set now again if you remember pre-training means that we are building the model from scratch and we have this humongous amount of data from various sources and we are trying to uh, build this or create this neural network or model from scratch and we are just uh, teaching this model some basic pattern recognition and language patterns and basic relationship between them that is all what we are doing so in this data set we could have something like uh, messages and then in that message there will be an assistant role and content so all your data goes into the content whereas assistant is simply your model and then you can have as much data as possible and you can divide and put it in here and you can of course as i said you can use it to train the model from scratch okay next up we have this supervised fine tuning this is where things become a bit more interesting so now we are getting towards the second stage where we have a base model and now we need to adapt it to specific use case or domain so you see this is where we have a structured question answer pair or instruction now you see that in this particular case we have um, something like message we have system role user role and assistant role user is asking some question and then assistant is responding to it now our pre-trained model is simply a model which recognizes the language you ask it something it gives you the next word or next token but this one is now becoming a helpful assistant so whatever data it has for example, you have also fine-tuned it in, on your uh, maybe weather forecast or your legal data. Now, the pre-trained model becomes a helpful assistant with the help of supervised fine-tuning data set, which you can see on your screen. So if you want to create a helpful assistant on your own data, on your own domain, you need to do the supervised fine-tuning and then you have this data set. Now, again, this example where you can see this uh, messages you can just convert it into any other data set format from shared gpt from alpaca then there are a few um, you know techniques and models which prefer some of the formats in most of the cases some of the fine tuners even convert or pre-process your data into a particular format so as long as you are following some standard convention most of the fine tuners are aware of that and I'll come to that uh, towards the end as which fine, fine tuner you should be using. I will give the uh, link to another video to you. Okay, moving forward, we have then reinforcement learning from human feedback. Now, this is again a very, very interesting um, field. So, this is called as RLHF dataset. So, this primarily add preference learning through uh, rejected responses. So, you see, here we have something like rejected response where model is asking that okay tell me a uh, user is asking tell me tomorrow's weather so there are two responses one is tomorrow's weather will be sunny this is accepted answer and the rejected answer is i don't know so whenever uh, when the model is fine-tuned a user will come and ask something the model will never give it a rejected response so basically we are aligning this model or grounding this model as per human preferences. So this is how uh, reinforcement learning works with human feedback. And there are a lot of other things which you can check out, but we are just focusing on data set, uh, different types of data sets here. Okay, so this is one thing now where you can use it, as I said earlier, this is mainly used for training reward models and optimizing AI behavior to be more aligned with human preferences and safety standards and then there are a lot of variants in it so 
um, you might have heard of grpo ppo and dpo where uh, you know some use reward function some use judge model there are a lot of variations there i'm not going to go into the detail there you can just search on my channel i have covered all of these in different details okay moving forward we have classification data set so this primarily if you can see at the example is giving where each input is assigned to one or more categories used for teaching models to classify or primarily categorize information um, so and then sometimes people give it one or zero values one for true and zero for uh, false and then you can classify them into various categories so basically normally it is used in the sentiment analysis or some sort of binary decisions then we have multimodal data sets so multimodal data sets are for of course vision language models where you can have uh, text to image generation or you can do ocr or you can do object segmentation detection where you provide it some images and then some text and that is how model learns that which images is which image is what along with a lot of other things but normally the data set primarily is in this format which you can see on your screen and this is not just confined to the images you can just uh, use any other modality like audio like video uh, here quite easily where you can simply put a user and assistant and then whatever modality is there your audio file your image or your video so this is how you structure your multimodal data sets quite easily moving forward uh, recently there is another you know field where we have agentic data set um, and you can see that in agentic one now what exactly is agentic model so what happens is user comes it asks a question model converts that question into a function call and then it has already a lot of tools defined within its um, training data set and it calls that function with the help of the application accordingly so you see that it says tools so tool is a function the so model is trained on a lot of tools um, definitions so it is able to convert your natural language prompt into the function call or tool call as you can see here so for example user says um, weather forecast or what is the weather like in Beijing today so there could be a tool call for real-time API or there could be a tool call for getting the city and then from there it returns the response and tools are simply external APIs nothing else and then you can even integrate it with your model context protocol okay then you know um, if you are looking to connect some um, model to visual elements or for spatial one these are the specialized models where we are going deeper into some vqa or visual question answering and then maybe object segmentation detection this is where you can give it coordinates or primarily this is used for the world model so where you provide it a screenshot or a screen image model is able to click and clack on that screen and maybe it could draw the bounding box there and then from there it could just maybe do the web navigation or do some sort of um, rpa or robotics platform automation so this is where you can have this sort of data set now let's compare all of these and see where exactly they fit in so if you look at this table this primarily is showing you how data set types progress in complexity and specialization pre-training data set from the foundation uh, with simple token prediction while formats like messages work well for this straightforward task supervised fine-tuning introduces conversational structure which is why formats like shared gpt which is designed for chat logs and alpaca which is designed for instruction following really became popular RLHF datasets add preference learning through rejected responses uh, and that they require extensions to standard formats. Whereas classification datasets use labels for categorization tasks, while multimodal datasets extend any base format with media file references. Agentic datasets represent the most complex type, in my opinion, that require tool definitions and multi-step reasoning patterns that go beyond simple conversion 
formats. So the evolution from simple formats to complex specialized structure reflects a growing sophistication of AI capabilities. Understanding both the format, how data is organized and type what the data teaches is really essential for effective AI development as the wrong combination can lead to training failures or suboptimal model performance. Now, this is a data set type. If you're for instance, if you have your data now and or maybe you say that, OK, fine, I have this huge repository of documents. How do I convert it into data set for that? Just go to my channel, search for how to create data set or something like that. And you should be able to find heaps of videos around it. Very, very easy. Um, and then once you have your data set, then next question would be how could which tool should I use? for fine tuning the LLM and how to use it. For that, just uh, maybe you can say uh, fine tuners. I think I already have a video. There you go. So I just did uh, this latest video on comparison of a lot of fine tuners. So just select one of them and then whatever suits your uh, use case and then use it. For each of those fine tuners, I have a separate video. So you can also go and install it locally and then have fun. If you still have questions, please put them in the comments. Please like the video. Just click on that like button, subscribe to the channel and please, please share the channel and share the video as that will be very, very helpful. Before I let you go, I also want to introduce you to our good friends at Camel AI who are sponsoring this video. Camel is an open source community focused on building multi-agent infrastructures for finding the scaling laws with applications in data generation, task automation, and world simulation. And you will find link to their website in video's description. That's it. Thank you for all the support.